Hey, welcome back to Pro Tips and Conversation with me, AC Pilot Zero. Today we will be continuing the adventure of Mrs. Thickbottom in New Game Plus, trying to track down the Black Flame. And after that, her build should be complete. Just need to unlock a few areas so I can start co-oping effectively. But let's attune some things here. So now we have double great combustion. Sweet. That'll make it real easy to shred bosses. Right, can't warp yet. Let me make sure I have Quillag's soul. Two of them. Perfect. Okay. So we're done down here. Next stop, Sense Fortress. I've been trying to decide if I want to go Grave Lord this time around, just to kind of get everything. I don't know about that. I'm not even sure I'm gonna... No, no, I have to drop off the Lord Vessel, because I'm probably gonna be co-oping in, uh... post and Orlando areas. So let me think. Well, I suppose I can give it a shot. Um... I think... I feel like the New Game Plus Kings are gonna be pretty tough. I don't know if the Havel Tank strategy is gonna work. But I've got a lot of Estus and a lot of Pyromancy, so maybe it won't be as bad as I think it will. We'll find out. It's kind of cool, though. Um, New Game Plus, I've been able to pretty much just breeze along, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like it's even less important to pick things up in New Game Plus, because really, you should have everything you need by the time you get here, you know. I don't even need Firekeeper Souls anymore, so... It's... <laughs> it's like so much faster. You know, I've already got both bells done, and how long have I been in New Game Plus? Doesn't feel like that long. Yeah, they didn't take away my Master Key either, I just recall. I opened up that gate, so... Neat! I am trying to think what sort of conversation do I want to have today. Um, I suppose I wanted to talk about pets a little bit, cats and dogs. So, here's my question for you. Something amusing here. Do you talk for your pet? I know some people do. And when they do it, they usually have like a special voice that they use. Because that's how they imagine that their pet sounds. And they'll have them... They'll talk for them, like, to other family members, you know. I know, uh, my sister does that, and sometimes my brother does that, too, with their pets. It's pretty funny. So, I do that with my cat. <laughs> when I'm talking to the missus, I'll talk for the cat. But my brother, he's got this beagle, and he imagines that the beagle sounds like Kevin from The Office. You know, he's, he's got he's got that, like... That slow kind of like, oh, I'm not good at everything, but I could, I'm good at some stuff. <laughs> so, pretty funny voice for a dog, I guess. This makes me think of that movie Up, where all the dogs had like, like their own little speech pattern and the way that they sounded. It's funny. I enjoyed that. So, if you do talk for your pets and you do have a ridiculous voice that you use for them, you're not alone. And it's more cute than it is embarrassing, so don't worry about it. I also wanted to talk about some of the differences or like quirks about cats and dogs. So uh, there's a lot of animal videos that get put on Facebook, right? Like wild animals and stuff, or, or domestic, but I always thought it's interesting when you see videos of big cats, you know, like cheetahs and lions and stuff even tigers all the cats kind of have like the same mannerisms it's just that they're different in size and i always thought that was that was kind of cute because like a cat is still a cat no matter how big it is and it still gets spooked easily and it still likes you know um playing by batting at things and in the same way so it's interesting to see how the minds of animals are, are so similar um, same with, uh, like, a dog and a wolf. If you watch videos of people who interact with wolves and, like, foxes and shit, you know, 
um, when an animal is comfortable with you, they kind of act the same, like what you would expect from any canine. It's, it's really interesting, I think, that like despite being wild or domestic, no matter how big it is, they still share some of their mannerisms. And in fact, it seems like all animals kind of like to play in a similar fashion. So I wonder if it's more of a universal intelligence type of thing. I mean, granted, different types of animals have different... Uh, wow, that was big damage. Have different uh, quirks about them, you know. But there are some similarities between all of them. So it's like... A mind just, just does certain things, you know. They... Animals feel sad. They feel happy. They get excited. They like physical contact. You know? It's just nice to see that there are some absolutes between them all. Very interesting, um, kind of an insight into how the mind works. It's a cool thing. So yeah, you'll see like a cheetah or a lynx or some, something like that sitting in a box. You know, you might have heard that phrase, if it fits, I sits. Because cats just like sitting in boxes for whatever reason. So yeah, but even the big ones do it and it's really funny. Now I can't think of what else to talk about. So, um... Whenever I'm playing this game, I'm, like, constantly thinking about builds. Uh, stuff that I want to do. And, my god, I so wish that I had more than ten character slots. I can't imagine how painful that is. Um, like, for example, today I was thinking about this Y-Hander. That weapon is just so tremendously fun. And I don't have anyone using it. And it's, it's more fun at low levels than it is at high. Oh crap. Ooh, that was close. Um, and so I was trying to think. Oh my god, he's... Okay, he's dead, yeah. Like, what can I do for that kind of a build? And also, I don't really have too many things that are fashionable. They're very min-maxed builds, and they're pretty much anything with 50 or more poise is wearing Havel's armor, which is kind of ugly, you know. And it's just annoying, but I imagine that I'm going to be going up mostly against tryhards, so I want to counter tryhard, I guess. While still having some flavor, you know. Like Mrs. Thickbottom, her outfit too is tryhard. But at least I get to look at her butt, so it works for me. Yeah, I mean, actually, she has like 0.2 weight left over, so if I really wanted to tryhard, I could wear the Hollow Soldier. Waist cloth instead of the Hollow Warrior, but there's less butt cheek that way, so that would be why I'm wearing this one instead, even at the cost of two poise. Although really, it's kind of a useless two poise. If you ever looked at the chart for a poise break limit, um, there are some numbers that are just like not useful, you know? I mean, in theory, every point of poise helps if you're getting hit like multiple times by like small weapons maybe. But for the most part, you want to just choose like a break point. Most people go with 53 because you can resist a two-handed greatsword that way. And then uh, they don't worry about, like usually people don't. Like that number, 53, is like, you're good, you know. They won't push it up to like 56, 60, you know, 61's good, but... You see what I'm saying? Like, in between uh, 57 to 60 is a useless amount to have. Um, so, usually you don't want to, like, waste a weight, you know, getting an arbitrary number like that. You're going to want to put those points into higher defense armor or, uh, you know, other gear. Anyway, that's just min-max talk. You should do whatever you want. But, like, if you're having trouble with your build, you're getting stunned a lot, then it's time to consider a change. 
But, um, talking a little bit about fashion. Uh, the standard armor set, the one that the warrior starts with. I've always found that cute on the female model because, um, the chest piece on females, it puts this cute little, like, red sleeve. This little, like, red cloth around the sleeve. I always thought that was a nice little flash, you know. Like a, like a, it's kind of, it's kind of a feminine thing to do, just to add this little splash of color, you know. Like, oh, isn't that lovely, you know. <laughs> uh, but, um, I like how it looks, and I think the bucket helmet looks cute, you know. I've wondered if in Souls 1 there's any hairstyles that you can actually see wearing the bucket helmet. It might be the long hair with the bangs. Uh, you might actually be able to see that. So I've always liked how that helmet looks. I also like... Um, brigand armor, the chest piece. It just looks cool to me, you know, and it's got kind of like this eastern feel to it. So yeah, I was kind of looking at a Zweihander build wearing the bucket helmet and the uh, brigand armor, but it's heavy, and I couldn't really get any kind of effective amount of poise while wearing it. And that made me sad. So, if I did do it... See, that's the problem with making a low-level build. And, you know, I've said before, things dry up after 60. But even pushing it to 60, like, the game thins out. You've seen, maybe, how hard it is for me to find summons at, uh, Sense Fortress. And I've been co-oping a little bit without recording, like, co-oping with randoms. And, um... I have had trouble finding summons at Sens consistently, and like, it seems like once you leave the parish, things just start to dry up. The depths isn't bad, I was there, I got a few summons in depths, but the wait time is pretty high. The game does still feel more populated than it was, you know, I think because of summer, but it's still kind of dead. Souls 3, you can find more consistent activity. Um, although... I will say I found more consistent co-op on Souls on PC, Souls 3 on PC, than I did on PS4, which is weird, because there are more PS4 players, but I think that's just like, it's just like the nothing but PvP crowd. So if you're just trying to co-op, you are going to be disappointed, I think, on PS4, because it's like all PvP people over there. You know, you never have trouble finding activity at Pontiff and the like, but... Um, whenever I see an air, a zone light up orange, you know, indicating that there's people there, and I drop a sign, most of the time I don't get summoned because those people know what they're doing and they just breeze right through the area. Whereas on Souls 3, you still see a good amount of noobs, probably because you can always find the game on sale somewhere on PC. Not so much with PS4. Every time PSN does have a sale, though, there's like a spike in activity. Um, so watch out for that. If you, you know, want to play a Souls game that's been dead for a while, if you see a sale, it's probably going to get some activity that week or two weeks after that. Maybe even a month. Um, but because of uh, people reselling, like, Steam keys and stuff, you can uh, pretty much always find more consistent activity on PC version of Souls uh, than PS4. So, there you go. But, I don't have, um, streaming stuff set up on PC, so it's so easy to do on the PS4, you just, like, it's got that broadcast feature built in. Super convenient. But maybe one day, if this works out, I will look into broadcasting on PC. Because I've got some really fun builds on, uh, Souls 3. Like, Souls 3 has so much more depth of mechanics. Um... I mean, th this does, this has got some, but the thing is, at low level, no, you're seeing the same stuff over and over. It's very repetitive, like, it's all vid gouge, bit of pyromancy, dark bead, like, just bullshit like that. But in Souls 3, you get a good amount more variety, which is really nice. Okay, this guy might actually tear me up, because it's New Game Plus. Oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble stunning him. Have a quick drink here. Interesting kick maneuver. 
I don't want to waste pyromancy on this fool. There we go. Because I want to burn it all up on the uh, golem. Wow, 12k. If only I still needed my souls. <laughs> like, dang, that's a big chunk. What is it like, double for New Game Plus? Probably not that high. Yeah, well, now I see how um, you can, like, for the people who don't stop leveling, if you keep just churning through games, you're going to get quite a bit of souls to level up with. So that's kind of cool. I was uh, looking up the Gravelord Covenant today, because yesterday I was having a chat with this guy who stopped by in the stream and he was talking about... I was talking about the Gravelord Sword, and he said that the Covenant increases the damage. And I was like, holy shit, really? So I looked it up, and um, it just says it increases the miracle damage, not the sword damage, like the weapon, you know. So that's a bummer. Because um, I thought, you know, that might actually make it viable at endgame. But sadly, no. Um, however, I was reading up on the Covenant, and it's kind of a shame that they didn't change it in remaster so that you know the red phantom grave Lord mobs would show up in new game they only show up in new game plus but as i've said before most people don't even bother with new game plus you know and i, I think you're gonna really surprise someone if they end up getting great they'll probably even be offline like most of the people who do new game plus are just trying to play through the game you know, because they enjoy it, and they probably wouldn't even be online. So it'd be shocking to see them getting grave lorded. So it's kind of a bummer. The Covenant... Oh god, he's raging again. Oh god. Oh god. That was close. Um, it's kind of useless, I guess you could say. Like, I see the signs popping up all the time at the Berg, though, and I just feel bad for the noobs who don't know what that is, right? And they're just like, oh, what the hell is this sign? Is this the summon sign? Let me get some help. And then they end up invading a grave board and they're like, what? <laughs> I can totally see that happening. Like, people do that all the time. That's why you see dragon signs and purple signs and, and all kinds of weird signs in low zones. Because they're just messing with people who don't know better. Like, new players who are just like, uh, I'll get some help. And then they end up summoning a fucking you know, purple phantom that kills them, or, you know, a grave lord or a dragon that kills them. It's just unfortunate. But, hey, people love to troll, so. That was easy. See? All this pyromancy is just, wow! Having so many casts. Didn't even need them all. I'm tempted to fight ONS solo. I don't think I want it. So also, um, now that I'm in Orlando, I just remembered, I had an interesting thought about the lore today on my way over here. In a previous video, I was talking about how Gwyn's wife, you know, the mother, mother of Gwendolyn and Guinevere, was never mentioned in the game. And yet there's a statue of some woman holding a baby who's holding the sunlight sword. And I kind of thought, maybe that's her. But maybe she was erased from history for doing something wrong. I speculated that maybe she's the mother of Priscilla, and because, you know, she cheated on Gwen, she was erased from history. Um, but then I started thinking, like, the gods have physical bodies. Gwen, Guinevere, Gwendolyn have physical bodies, right? Uh, Nameless King, physical body. So the gods seem to be tangible things. Uh, but Velka does not have a body that we have seen, because I don't think Velka is the crow. I think the crow is a servant of Velka, but it's not actually her. I've always imagined Velka looking like the Maiden in Black from Demon Souls. <laughs> so I started wondering, what if Velka is Quinn's wife? You know, what if she felt betrayed, or, I mean, she kind of betrayed Gwen if she, if, if she is uh, the mother of Priscilla. But let's set that aside. Let's assume maybe it is uh, Guinevere, right? Either way, maybe 
Um, Velka is Gwyn's wife. Felt betrayed from being erased from history, right? Um, maybe her physical body was destroyed, but her spirit lives on or something like that, right? Um, and so, if you follow the Dark Soul plot of the game, there's a theory that, like, Velka is kind of conscripting you to slay the gods to get justice for your own side. She's the goddess of sin, you know? The gods have sinned, and she's sending you to destroy them. That's why she sends her crow to cart you off from the asylum, right? So, interesting idea there, if Velka is actually Gwent's wife, and, and she's trying to... She's, like, being spiteful, trying to get even on him. Um... So that's a cool idea. I might use that for the Souls campaign that I'm running. So yeah, if you didn't catch that when Common was mentioning it, I am running a Dark Souls D&D 5th Edition game. It is on YouTube somewhere. Maybe you can find it. It's not on my channel, though. It's a secret. But it's a pretty cool setting. And, uh, what we're doing there is we're literally just playing through the exact same plot because I'm kind of lazy, and it was easy. <laughs> I, I kind of know this game like the back of my hand, so it didn't take much prep to, you know, roleplay through it. Um, but, thanks to the magic of roleplaying, this is what makes it fun. It's less linear, even less linear than, uh, playing the video game, because in roleplay you can do whatever you want. You're like... Uh, I talk to this person, I climb this wall, I unlock this door, I cast this wacky spell that lets me change the laws of physics. You know, you can do anything you want. And so because of that, the game's going to differentiate. For example, in that campaign, Oscar's alive. They rescued him by um, giving him some of their humanity. And so he was able to, you know, not go hollow and carry on. So he's going to be popping up throughout the story. I'm probably going to do the cut content stuff for him. Have him end up being the, the rival. Right, let's uh, disarm. <laughs> Just going to go down and uh, use the bonfire anyway. So don't care about burning charges right now. But yeah, that's cool. I, I like how there's so much more you can do. Like, you know, the elevator for the Undead Parish, right? It starts off raised up, so you can't use that shortcut. By the way I'm running it is... It's broken. So if you had, like, the appropriate skill, you could repair the elevator, access the shortcut up to, uh... Up to, uh, the parish immediately, you know? Another thing, um... In the parish, there's a Firekeeper soul with the Baronique Knight right in front of it. And Balder Knight's further back, right? So I'm gonna do a scene there where, like... The Baronique Knight is trying to defend the Firekeeper Soul because he thinks that's the honorable thing to do. Whereas the, the Balder Knights, they're like, we want to take the soul and use it for power, you know, to fuel us as we are questing to, you know, lift the curse. So, like, it would be a, a conflict of which side do you choose? Do you want to take the Firekeeper Soul for yourself? Um, you know, who do you, who do you end up fighting? Like, maybe you side with Baron Knight and you fight the Balder Knights. And, so that'd be like a fun little thing. Um, yeah, yeah, just, just some cool, like, story elements I'm adding in. It's a fun thing. Um, yesterday I got an invite to this thing called Team Spock on Twitch, which apparently, this is a guy who scouts out, uh, like, fledgling streamers and kind of recruits them all into this network where they can, like, get a little more exposure and work together, right? So I was like, oh, cool. Thanks for the heads up. Or, or thanks for the help. So, a little shout out to you there, Mr. Spock. Appreciate it. Um, so it was cool, you know, there's like there's like a lot of people trying to get started on there. Uh, some of them are more successful than I am. There's like this guy who's been streaming four days, and he's also doing... He said he's streaming Soulsborne, and uh, he's got um, more followers and, and views than I do in four days, and I was like, oh, feels bad. But, he's a younger guy, and I think he might uh, be using a cam, so I imagine that makes a difference, because people like to see... Oh, crap! People like to see, uh... your reactions and whatnot, right? 
Ooh, that was close. Just gonna dip over here and grab the soul, because why not? Maybe one day I will get a camp for this thing, but I don't know. I, I don't really have a household for that. Like, the PlayStation's in the living room. It's not exactly a private affair. <laughs> but we'll see. But, you know, if if that comes uh, to be in demand and this starts working out, then maybe uh, I'll make some improvements. Get one of those PlayStation cams mounted on the TV, something like that. So you can see my eyebrows pop up when I get surprised and things like that. Breezing right through. Let's take a moment to enjoy. So this is like a whole city, as you can see. It's not just a cathedral. Which I thought was interesting. So maybe in the campaign they will actually visit some of those buildings, in which case I figure, have to figure out what the hell am I going to put in them. Or maybe I'll just say they're off, they can't be reached, whatever. But, so probably it's housing for Silver Knights and other pseudo-divine things, you know. But there's not enough gods to fill all those buildings, obviously. Uh, but, I mean, Gwen had legions of Silver Knights, so that could be what's up. Or, it could be, like, privileged humans who were invited to live here. You know, so they don't have to live in the Undead Burg. Probably, like, big-time religious folks. Maybe warriors like Havel. Yeah, I imagine Havel would live. Oh, crap, no Solaire. Why is that? Because I never talked to him back at the parish, probably. Crap. Because I didn't need to, because I already had the soap. Oh, dear. Well, that might complicate things. Hmm. That is some good damage. Even on New Game Plus. Have a seat, Mr. Silver Knight. Yeah, I'm probably going to have Havel also in the campaign be like a character that you can talk to, and he, he'll probably be on the verge of going hollow, though. Just cool stuff. I do recommend, though, if you try to adapt a a game or a movie or something like that to um, a role-playing campaign, don't change the mechanics too much. Because those games are designed to run the way that they were shipped, you know? And if you just start moving things around, it's going to imbalance stuff and complicate things, so... The only thing I really changed is the addition of humanity, which is essentially extra lives, you know, because... The campaign should be more challenging than ordinary, and you should expect to get killed at points, and you know, and then eventually your character runs out of humanity and goes crazy and becomes a hollow that attacks the party. So, good times. Boing. shall we talk about while I am trudging through the boring stuff. It'll be exciting once we get to co-op and like just kind of doing this again. Even New Game Plus is not adding that much of a challenge to be honest. This is kind of easy. Right, so there's a Y-Hander build I wanted to do. That weapon is amazing because of the crowd control. You knock shit down, which gives you breathing room, right? Um, so... Shoot, do I want to summon Slayer? No, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to fight him alone. I have enough charges of... spell to do that, I think. Yeah. Right. So, that's why I hand her. Crowd control. I wanted to name her Pancake Maker or something like that. You know. 
maybe try and make her look a little bit like a chef. That's also why I like the brigand armor, because it kind of has like that apron look to it. <laughs> uh, I thought that'd be cute. Serving up pancakes with this Y-hander. Oh shit, who did I kill last time? I think I killed Snow. No, I I think I mean I think I killed Snow last. So we're gonna do him first this time. Ooh. A little late on blocking Ornstein there. Oh god. Okay, we're in retreat mode. Medic. Ooh, that's close. Just gotta keep some space between me and Ornery. Huh. Oh, stop it. Biggie Smoes is down. Heavy boy. Did you know that Smoes a cannibal? Just saying. Interesting tidbits. If he does the third strike in that combo, you are gonna need to be really good at timing that roll or just block. Because it's a huge sweep and it will knock you right up into the air. It does the biggest damage of the three hits. Shield is very effective against Orn, but not against Mo, because he will just bust right through it with his massive hammer. Here comes triple hit. Ooh. Oh god. I forgot he had a fourth that he could do. Triple hit. Whoop. Night night. Good game, Orn. You tried. So Souls 2, though, I was talking about the difference between Souls 1 and Souls 3 builds, like, you know, mechanics-wise. Souls 2 has even more fun stuff you can do. Poison's actually effective in that game. There's just oodles and oodles of spells, and some of them are kind of situational, but they're fun. Like Life Drain Patch, you know. Um, it's got a good amount of depth to it there. But the trouble is, in Souls 2, there are no builds, per se, because there's no reason to stop leveling next to Soul Memory. Sure, you could do an gate build, but you're just nerfing yourself, like, going to see who gives a shit. Eventually, the people who are not uh, using a gate are going to pass you up, uh, levels-wise, and then you won't be playing with them anymore anyway, so... Really? I, and it takes up a ring slot. I really don't think there's any point to that. Shit, we have one coming in. Right, I gotta go back and kill, uh... What's his name? Lotric. So yeah, for Souls 2, it's it's just kind of a shame that, like, builds aren't really a thing. You can just do whatever you want. You know, if you don't have enough levels for it, get more levels. <laughs> do whatever you want. It's a little saddening that they kind of took that away from people. Man, I totally thought I was going to have to use my bandit's knife in that fight, but... Surely didn't. I should probably be using it on this guy, though. Such little damage. God damn. I don't want to use my combustions because I'm saving them. No! Alright. You've upset me. Chaos knife. I gotta clean up my box again. I got too much crap in there. Bet you didn't like that, did you? Did you sport? Whoop! Oh god. Is he dead? Holy crap! 
Stop! No! Oi! You know, um, that would be a fun cosplay to do the giant, because you can get all their gear and then you can cast, you know, Wrath and Heal, and that would be pretty fucking cool, actually. Really, really fun invasion or co op build for this place. Cosplay builds are always fun when you see them in the, you know, the area that they're relevant to. I love that. Switch back to old reliable here. This man is guilty AF. Guilty. I should have equipped double fireball. Oh well. I didn't think about it. Big damage. What? Oh, you didn't. Try parrying this. Oh, you can't? Oh, I'm sorry. And that's exactly how I imagine PvP is going to go on this character. Okay. So I'm not sure that there is much more to show you as far as Souls 1 goes, except for like, you know, just like some co-op vids, but as far as doing a playthrough of the game, you've almost exhausted that content as I'm not doing like every boss or what have you. I'm just trying to show you this build and how to assemble it quickly. Which means it might be time for Souls 2 soon enough. Kick that off. So actually, Maybe I will have enough time to get through all the games by the time Elden Ring rolls around. However, Souls 2 has ridiculous amount of content in it. So freaking much. Especially if you wanted New Game Plus, because New Game Plus has changes in it, you know, with the added Black Phantom enemies. So, pretty wild. Uh, Firelink Shrine... You know what, I never picked up Beatrice's gear after I killed the Four Kings and... A new game. It sucks, I'm missing the witch outfit. Um, god. Do I want to bother with this? Yeah, let's go Dark Wraith. Okay. We'll fight the kings. Oh, I gotta go get the... Covenant Ring from Sif. Oh! So much work! Right. Firekeeper is dead, but now that I have maximum Firekeeper soul. Bum, 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 bum. And after you do that, you can talk to her. Thank you. I am Anastasia, the store. Now I can continue my duty as a keeper. But I only hope that my impure towel. Not offend. Forgive me. I have been pure. My tongue was never intended for restoration. Please, if you have any heart, leave me be. I wish not to speak. <sighs> Poor thing. Really? What she says tells me that she's had a lot of abuse. Like PTSD, you know? It's a shame you can't bring her any comfort. It's, uh... When the characters in the Souls campaign found her, they tried to, like, offer her food and water. Uh, they were being really... And, like, these are new players, too. Only one of them actually knew who that character was. Only one of them has played Souls before. So, it was just kind of tender to see that. 
Yeah, 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 blow it at your ass. Nobody likes you. You schmuck. Matter of fact, let's get rid of them. Just gotta watch out for his jump because that's gonna deal tremendous damage. Give me a catch pole. Nope. Damn. Okay. Moving on. I should join the force coming while I'm here. Probably take all of them out. Get uh, Ferris's humanity, etc. You know, I keep thinking about that invader. Uh, if you watch the co-op video with me in commentary, we got invaded in the parish by this guy named Bob, like three, four times over. He just kept coming. But I was uh, thinking about what he had on, and I really like his look. Matter of fact, he was wearing um, mother mask with the eastern armor, and the mother mask is kind of samurai-ish in design and I was like you know what that's actually pretty dope but I mean his weapon wasn't but like he was using black knight great sword so it didn't really fit that theme but like imagine eastern armor mother mask with um Murakumo as like a mid-roll you know that sounds pretty good that's a cool build flavorful build so see I just keep having all these cool build ideas and I don't have enough slots to explore them all. Just got a message from Wifey here real quick. Right. Okay. Taken care of. Back to the adventure. I always like to make sure I don't have any dust on my cable when I reconnect the controller. You know, because I, I don't want to screw up my port there. So that's why I blow on it. Come on, Skippy! Oof! That backstab damage. My, my, my. Flawless. I missed the Claymore, too. God damn it! I'm kind of uh, not liking my brick build anymore, just because it's so basic, and all I've used is that stupid Chaos Guard Rose Halberd, so I might do something else with more weapon options. And that would give me an opportunity, you know, to play. Like, I could probably try and squeeze all these weapons into a single build. But I want to be able to wear... You know, the cool samurai set I was just talking about. Or the adorable bucket helmet brigand armor set up for, uh, female. So. Whoop! No, this guy might be a little problematic. Oh, here we go. Just gonna wait for him to start healing. Oh, didn't give him the chance. Wow, they are worth a lot of souls on New Game Plus. Hot diggity. Yeah, it looks like it is double, matter of fact. Alright, come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I've got all day. This is Thick Bottom has shit to do. Oh, I forgot the thief. Oh, that's bad. I hope he doesn't backstab me. I'm going to have to do some dancing here. If I can take care of one, the other one will not catch me. Whoop! Nope! Bad thief. Okay. Come on. Here, boy. Right, no poise. See, this is what can happen to you in PvP without poise. <laughs> That's why you should, uh, if you're running without poise, you should learn Toggle Escape, I guess, even though I don't 
like endorsing that crap. Such BS. How did I not get staggered? Oh, I have 33 points. Okay, cool. That's a good amount for light weapons. Sorry, Ferris. You know I love you. Waifu. But... It's just not enough room for the two of us. Besides, I'm married. Just gonna grab this shit because... Why not? Whoop! Hey, fellas. How y'all doing? Pick up a bit of moss here. Never hurts. Alley oop. Oh crap, that's the grapple. Oh, I walked into that one. Don't eat me, Mr. Bush. Usually you eat the bush, but around here the bush eats you. Like Soviet Russia. Give me that fancy Asian armor. Oh yeah. Two sets, just what I needed. <laughs> Crap. Yeah. Right, I totally forgot I came here to fight Sif. Deep. I think I'll stay in the Force Covenant too, because if I want to actually try this build in PvP, that's usually a good way to do it. Assuming, you know, I, I'm pretty sure people still use the Forest. I hear them complaining about ganks all the time. Well, maybe you shouldn't invade then. Stupid, 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 stupid. I don't know why that happens. But every now and then it does. Some glitch. Right off a cliff. What were you thinking, Mrs. Thickbottom? Shame. Now my damage has gone to shit because I lost my humanity. close. At least the backstab's still reliably high damaging. Why didn't I get one there? I don't know. Bada bing. Come on. Come on. Cleric! Come on! What are you doing? There we go. Nope. None for you. A backstab would be cool, you know, if they want to give me one. Amazing the mobility you gain when you unlock. Kind of scary. Matter of fact. Okay, we can do a quick recovery here. Deal with the thief. Whoop! Don't want Albina to see me because then she'll won't even invite me to the covenant. Mm. 
amazing how quickly I can block. Okay, situation handled. Yeah, 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 Kevin. Thank you, come again. Now let me just have a word with Shiva in case I ever decide to buy some of his gear. Make sure we're on good terms. You have to talk to him up here, otherwise he won't spawn in the swamp, and then you can't buy the stuff, so don't forget that. Bading. Okay. So Sif is going to be hitting my shield even harder this time, which means I will most likely have to roll through the double spin attack, otherwise she's just going to beat me down. And that hurts when it busts through your shield. If you ever thought, hey, this looks like the start of the DLC area, well, you're correct. It is. You come in through this bridge. And, you know, the DLC takes place in the past. So you gotta wonder, like, what happened exactly? This is the sanctuary garden here, where the where you fight the manacore. Wait, no. This would be where the mushroom is at. Remember that there's the bonfire next to the mushroom lady, and then there's all those weird humanity statues around it. This would be that zone. I mean, this this area is obviously bigger. But somehow, it turned into that. Okay. Oh god! See? Cut right through me, I knew it. Oh, oh dear, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, if I miss time a roll, I'm gonna be taking damage on Puppy Sif here. She's backing away too quickly. Oh, I actually caught her. Alright. Good game, Dogbert. You surprised me. Props for that. I'm gonna need to buy some more bones. Okay, time to clean up this box. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need two of these. Don't use miracles. I do use thrust weapon. Don't need two of those. Don't want two of those. Oh, hang on. Don't need two of those either. And then... I want to be able to weapon swap quickly, so i got to clear these out. I missed the Black Knight Sword too. Oh, but I have a build for that, though. It's just kind of... I don't know. I might actually re redo that one, make it something... something more interesting. Even though it is a funny build. I call it the Golf Champion. And it uses Black Knight weapons. So can you see why I named it that? <laughs> because... The Golf Swing! You know, on, on the two-hand R2 of Black Knight Greatsword and the uh, Great Axe. It has that, like, lifting golf swing that just sends people flying. I just thought that was a funny concept. Four... Boosh! Lock people into the air. Okay. 
cleaned it up. Let's see, without anything else, I'm gonna stow. Stow that. Stow that, stow that, stow that. Bunch of crap I don't need. Let's make sure that we're in top shape. Okay, now. Okay, so fighting Sif definitely has me feeling nervous about Four Kings. Because I'm sure they're going to be hitting harder. And their explosion is probably going to be, like, really bad as far as damage goes. But we will try the Havel strategy and see how it does. And if it doesn't work, I'll come up with something else. Probably just go in there normally and, like, roll around a bit. Okay. Gonna need my ghosty thingies. Uh, there you are. Gonna need... Let's farm for those ghosty thingies a bit. Just increase the drop rate, see if we get any. I'm guessing it's gonna be two hits to kill a ghost on New Game Plus. With Chaos Rapier. If it'll be three hits, that's gonna be really bad. Just thinking about the room where they swarm you, three hits is going to take too fucking long. So I might actually bust out combustion in that room, if that's the case. Maybe two-handing will help. Let's see. Oh, it is three hits. Crap. No bueno. No bueno at all. Let's see if I can two shot. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's gonna be what I'm doing then. Two hander, two shot. I'll probably trade these souls off to common for one of his builds or something. The only way you can get plus seven Estus in new game is by trading. You would cap out at plus six. So if you're running like a 120 build, you probably want to trade for a soul. That way you have a slight edge in PvP. Let's, uh, boost that stamina a bit. I'm just gonna have it on my back. Having enough extra weight for a three-pound shield, really, in terms of versatility, amazing idea. Because all the most notable shields are three-pounder. Uh, Blood Shield, the Crest Shields, Grass Crest. I think that's all I really use. <laughs> but yeah, those are, like, very important shields. Black Knight Shield is just so heavy, but it's also pretty awesome. But most of the time, I don't have spare weight for it. Okay, let's top off. Doubt I'm gonna need 20 Estus to fight. Um, four kings, but, you know. Ow. Fuck, 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 fuck. Drink! 
Oh, really? That's not good. Hmm. Well, with the loss of the humanity, I bet um, the lightning rapier will not do enough to two shot. But we'll give it a try. I had a feeling I was going to die. Well, at least, you know, New Game Plus has some challenge to it. That's good. It is kind of easier than I thought it would be, for the most part. But, you know, avoiding damage is really what it's about. And if you're blocking or rolling, you're not taking any damage. That's why SL1 is possible, because you can just completely negate damage. So, if you're out of your depth, same thing you want to do. You just want to try and not get hit. Yeah, fuck. Oh, wow. Are they resistant to lightning? Oh my god, I think they might be. Okay, in that case, let's try the chaos and see if it's better. Chaos without humanity is actually weaker than fire. Oh yeah, they're definitely, definitely resistant to lightning. Come on. Come on. There you go. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Holy crap. Oh yeah, ghosts don't fall. Yeah, this is, this is too low. Oh, God! Okay. Hopefully I don't suffer a loss, because it's a lot of humanity. I just... What the hell? Get up here and fucking die. God. Get fucked up. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be stingy with the Estus. I might have to come back here a second time to have enough for four kings. I, I really got to stay healed up for this. They are hitting hard. Sweet Jesus. Okay, medic. There you are. Are we clear? I think we did it. Nice. Okay. Time to go talk to Ingward. I like this guy. You know, he's... Oh shit, I forgot about those ghosts. Oh! Oh god! Anyway. Inward, yeah. He's so 
He's got such like a calm voice. He's just a soothing man. Just hanging out with ghosts, you know. He's probably really lonely. <laughs> just like, oh, I've been here for ages. Waiting for the one with the Lord Vessel. Hanging out with the dead, losing my mind. See? Neat. Okay, bye. Gotta keep moving before my curse wears off. Still got a couple more ghosts I gotta kill. It lasts five minutes, I think. You could tell it's still on because you have those gray wisps around yourself. If they go away, then your curse is over. You can also tell, because this will be grayed out. Um, if it lights up, then that means your curse is over. Bye-bye. There's a couple more items you can get in that building if you go on the roof. It's a rare ring of sacrifice and some other thing that's like not important. You can see item, item. I usually don't bother. There, see? Curse wore off. Curse lit up again in my item. Gonna get another composite bow, because why not? They're good. Maybe I can trade it. Cool beans. Moving on. 15 Estes. Considering I can heal with humanity, that might actually be enough. And, you know, if the Dark Wraiths don't fuck me up. That'd probably be enough to fight four kings. Gonna check message from Honey real quick. Oh, she just okay. Short comment there. Moving on. All right, I'm gonna need my dependable shield again. Yeah, we'll keep item find on. Cause you know. Chunks and uh, dark hands. Why not? The backstab on the rapier is satisfying. I'll tell you that. are so tall. You notice everything in this game is bigger than you are? <laughs> like, what's up with that? Well, I have a theory that things just kind of get bigger as they gain power. Look, at it's like a seven, eight foot tall man. Explosivo! Oh god. Woo! That thing will hurt a lot if you get hit by it, that spike. So do take cash. Alright. Done and done. Come on. I'd rather fight these than the Souls 3 Dark Wraiths all day. <laughs> I guess they just thought 
Oh man, my badass enemies are getting backstabbed to death. So they're like, in Souls 3, we'll make them like way more powerful. <laughs> Shoot, I think a Dark Wraith could beat a Silver Knight even. And considering... I mean, considering that the Dark Wraiths are the soldiers of Kath, that's bad if they can beat a Silver Knight. You know, because they're in direct opposition, really. Forces of dark against forces of fire. Yeah, I love that thrust attack. We should wide open. So great. Come on, Skippy. You missed. So, I suppose I can talk a bit about Souls 2. On Facebook, there's a huge divide about either people like Souls 2 the most, or they absolutely fucking hate it and they think it shouldn't even be... have been made, you know. Um... And then a lot of people say, it's a good game, it's just not a good Souls game. <laughs> you know? Like, it's not a true Souls game. Mm. Well, it is a Souls game, though. It's got all the same shit. Plus more. It's just that, you know, they put adaptability in for whatever dumbass reason. <laughs> when people first started playing Souls 2, they thought that adaptability was the new resistance stat. As in, you never level it, it's useless. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you start getting all your rolls caught, and people are like, Rolling is broken! What's going on? Crap. Okay, this is bad. I'm gonna have to... ...do some backstabbing. How am I gonna do it, though? There's two of them. Oh, well that, ha that helps. Thanks, bud. Yeah, anyway. Um, Souls 2 is very clunky. It feels like the controls are, are like more slippery or unresponsive than even Souls 1. Uh, soul memory is a complete bitch. You know? makes it really hard to consistently co-op and match up with people. It's it's all really random. So, that alone makes the environment more solitary. You know, you can't, you just can't consistently do multiplayer. Because soul memory is always changing. But, here's what led me to start appreciating Souls 2. When you play it with friends, and there's no tutorial boss, so it's really, it's like, it's a good starting point for someone new to the Souls series. There's no tutorial boss, the mechanics are pretty forgiving, they have life gems. You know, it is more accessible for a new player. Um, so, it, when you're playing with friends, uh, it's really fun, because there's just so much content. Uh, as long as you're careful about soul memory, so you can stay matched up, it's actually not bad, you know? And you can make any build that you want, because there's no point in stopping leveling. So, it has merit. You know? But it also has flaws. But you just need to appreciate it for what it is. And, you know, if, if you can see the good things about Souls 2, then you can start to enjoy it. You just enjoy it in a different way than the other Souls games. You know, you can't expect it to be the same, because it's not. But it is enjoyable. For sure. Okay, here we go. Using the Havel method. Will it work? I don't know. Prepare to school of hard knocks. Holy shit, that's big damage. Small damage on the arm still though. I'm just gonna tank the hits. But yeah, getting hit by the sword. Jesus Christ, I'm sure the grapple We'll do a lot of damn. Oh. 
a lot of damage as well. And the explosion. Cool, got some good damage in there. I don't think I have enough casts for this. Oh shit, and the other, other one spawned so quickly, that means I'm behind. Oh my god. That was beastly. I'm really gonna have to be careful here and keep my health high. Yeah. I don't have enough cast, so. That's problematic. And I forgot to slot my, my eight fireballs. Yeah, once I run out of cast, this is gonna get more difficult. That's for sure. As long as I can stay on top of, you know, not having two kings attacking me at once, I think I can pull it off. Come on, don't miss. It's possible because they, see, they twist around so much. Oh my god, that's bad. All my damage is missing. Oh shit. Okay. Just gotta go ham on him now. There's only one way this is gonna end. Oh crap. Oh, there's the other king. Oh god. What's he doing? Shit. Run! That was close. Okay, ham mode. <laughs> oh, he's barely got any life left. Oh, God. Can I do it? Oh, shit. That hurt. Heal, heal, heal. Yes! Whew. Oh, that was scary. Alright, hello, Kath. I wonder how many souls I'll get for that. 180,000. Yeah, I'd say it's worth that. Jesus. Okay. Gotta remember to slot those spells. Now I can be a dick wraith. Yay. What a long story. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've seen this before, my friend. Let's go back to the dark place. Because the dark is gentle and embracing. Right? Right, Candle? Thanks, buddy. Uh, fuck it, let's just do it. Let's just get all the shit. It'll be nice to have the upgrade to Dark Hand, at least. Thank you. I really hope... I actually don't know if changing Covenant in Souls 3 will knock down your progress. So... I have to find that out. Hopefully... It doesn't. Fireball. Cool. Okay, now. I need to make progress. Um. Right, gotta get my Estus back. Now I need to go, uh. I gotta kill a Hydrant still, I think. I haven't done that yet. Shoot. Okay, get some Estus here. And then perish. out here. Ooh, 92 humanity. I should store some. Coolio. Uh, right. Hydra's this way.
A million souls. Mmm. Tasty. It's funny, sometimes on Facebook you'll see people like, Oh, I just lost this many souls. I lost two million souls. I lost however many souls. And it's like, well, you weren't using them anyway. Am I supposed to feel bad about that? <laughs> if you're still leveling, it, it might be worth something, but... I see that a lot about Bloodborne. Oh, I just lost this many Echoes. It's like, well, clearly you weren't using them. It's always um, a bummer, too, when you meet people who are new to the series and they don't understand the importance of stopping your leveling up. And so they just keep going and going, and then they're like, I can't find any co-op or PvP, like, what the heck? And then you try to explain to them, hey, there's a agreed meta level, and they just, like, reject it at first. They can't believe it's true. <laughs> They're like, why would anyone do that? You know, it's terrible. Why would you stop, you know, doing game stuff? And it's just like, well, that's how it is. And, and they got accepted, and they don't always want to. So you can either be alone, or you can agree to stay at a low level. Hope I don't get jumped on. Ooh, wow, I'm dealing shitty damage. Oh! Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, good. Thanks, Hydra. You're a real friend in these dark times. The unexpected friend. Come on. Nope. Up today. Oh shit! I was afraid of that. At least it didn't kill me. Oh! Holy cow! Okay, alright. Running, 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 running. Okay, drink. Drink. We're gonna burninate this some bitch. Pull up! <laughs> Stupid Hydro Blast Pokemon bullshit. Fuck you. Oh god! What? Yeah. No, don't spit. That's close. Come on, I'm here! Do it! Do it now! Oh, cast the spell. Come on. Ugh. More. More. No, don't, don't. Why don't you listen to me, you stupid wannabe dragon? Stupid water dragon thing. Okay, that should leave the last head, which I gotta go over here to get. Yep, for some reason it always veers off to the side like that. Aha! Gotcha. And then it realizes it doesn't have any heads and dies. It's like, oh, I can't think anymore. Okay, gotta quit load to spawn in the gold guy. I'm starting to really miss co-op. This is feeling a bit grindy, doing it all twice. 
But soon, I'll have the black flame and I can come out. Soon. Really, you're not gonna get stunned? That's cool. Yes. Yes, it is of assist. Thank you very much. I wonder if uh, she's anyone else's, you know, she's anyone's waifu. That dusky lady. I've never really enjoyed that hairstyle. But I'm sure somebody likes her. She is quite elegant and refined. She's a real princess. Teaches you the awesome bow of perfectness. Perfect posture. Bum, bum, bum. Also sells the best. I have no intelligence catalyst. Okay, let's GTFO. Onward to see this place to grab the pendant and then DLC time. What is it? What's on her head? What was she wearing on her head in that clip? What is that? Uh, it's like a crown. Like, you don't know. Okay. Is the black knight down here? No? Cool. Must have already whacked him. I just need a quick bonfire to warp from. 14 this should be enough to get the job done. Uh, yeah, no, no, this one. Okay, here we go. So over here, this is where you get the crystal halberd, that giant on the right there has a chest behind him that's a mimic crystal halberds inside of it if uh if you ever wanted to use that i guess i mean apparently it's it's high damage until it breaks you know it's like if you're kind of new at the game and you just find it you'd be like oh this is a good weapon but i never bother with the thing Fry up some pork. Good damage. Hell yeah. But it smells good too. I'm sure this guy could take out half my life or more, though, with the charge. Woo! Night, night. Pig helm. I also want to do pig night. See? It's so much I want to do. Arg! Kills me. Just kills me. Uh, right. Okay, we're good. I just needed to rest. Pig knight with smoths on the chest, you know, just a big fat pig. That sounds like so much fun. Maybe a pig with his Y even, that, that'd be pretty cool. If you were a pig, what weapon would you use? Whoop! Backstabu! Backstabu again!
Backstabu. Triple. Can I go for four? Nope, nope, nope. Too dangerous. Okay. Okay, alright. Holy Jesus. Played a little too fast and loose there. Wow, that damage is freaking insane. Okay, round two. I ain't giving up. I ain't afraid. Uh. <laughs> you ever wonder how some of the like huge things in the game move around in these in these smaller spaces? Like giants, like the giants in Sense Fortress, do they just climb up there? Oh good, it's still enough to one shot. I was afraid it wouldn't be. Wow, that's a 200 damage difference with the humanity on a back stem. That was close. That dude almost caught me. Come on. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Woo! Down here, fellas. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Right on schedule. Oh, God! Oh, this is bad. Hey, you! I gotta stop locking on. Bada bing. See how easy it is to backstab when you're unlocked. Maybe try that out in PvP. Thank you. Okay, I will. <sighs> do I want to do this since I'm here? I kind of do because... Whoa. I need to unlock this place for co-op anyway. Then I don't want to have to kill all those stupid things again, so... We'll just breeze through here, in theory. I have a lot of HP now. I actually might try the skip method. Right, so you... Pull the lever, roll onto the thing. In theory, it works. Let's find out. Oh god. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try rolling instead. That actually wasn't that bad. I wonder if they patched it. I hope not. Because that would make this a little pointless. Oh! Oh god! Go, go, go! No, no, no! Oh, So close. Okay, I, I gotta have a little more control. I panicked a bit there. But it's doable. Definitely doable. I'll try to skip the prison for the moment. You gotta land on one of those posts. Okay. I'm gonna die anyway if I fail to do this. I don't really care how much Estus I use. Oh, snap! Getting sniped. Those arrows hurt so much, too. No! Urgh. Okay, fuck it. I'm not gonna waste all day doing that. But it is possible. Wow. Once that archer gets you sent, he does not give up.
look at the size of those arrows. It's like a four foot arrow. Alright. Can't parry that. Okay. Rare ring. Because protection from curse. Just in case. Oh no, it's C. Oh, I totally didn't see that coming. I am so shocked. Oh gosh, I think I'm gonna die. What a shame. be enough on the return trip if I burn through a lot of them. Okay, um, yeah, I want humanity. You, they don't really have any attacks you can block, as I recall. <gasps> no! Oh! Pain and suffering. Hey, buddy, what's up? You a little stuck in there? That sucks. Only there was a reason to let you out. So if I double hit with the running attack, it takes him out, but I gotta secure both hits. I gotta be pretty close. Her. Squarely. Squarely. Yes! See? I knew it. Poor mermaid thingies. Okay, now I want my decent shield back. And... I'm probably gonna burn these. Just to get through it quickly. Yeah, I've got anything I want. Oof. Lightning to the doom. Huh. Are you kidding me? That will bleed you out quick if she hits with all of them, so be careful. It is a female, too. It's got breasts this is if you ever get to see them on the front and see she's got a little oh maybe not I totally thought this was the female one I mean she just has big pecs I guess well I mean I, I, I think this is decidedly the male of the species so maybe it still is or maybe they're two different species who knows, really? This 
so there's lots of um dragon kind represented throughout the game without there being any dragons right you got the hydra the drakes the serpents is that one i'm forgetting the the big ass hellkite drake um oh yeah the, the primordial serpents framped and all that um so there's like it seems like all manner of scaly and lizardy thing and serpenty thing are all kind of on the same side. You know, they're all derived from dragons, just like different paths of evolution, or maybe like weaker, weaker dragon blood created them, some shit like that. It's just interesting, but apparently, um. Like, you get dragon scales off of them, you know? And those are the same as a real dragon scale. So apparently something about them... It's probably like... There's like one big juicy scale on them that can be used for crafting, and that's why you only get one at a time. But like, even on something as big as a Hydra, you gotta get like the most perfect scale off of it. You know, for it to count. For it to be of enough quality. So fuck it, I'll just keep my my headdress on. Even though it's risky. It's got a serpentine a bit, so I don't get shot in the damn back. My magic. This guy always fucking pops me after I pull the lever. He see gets a shot in before I can even like turn to block him. It's annoying. Okay. There's stuff going the direction behind me, but it's usually not worth getting. There's a mimic back there. I think it drops crystal shield or some trash. Not important. Ooh, a buffed archer. That's not good. Whoop! You gotta be quick through here, because sometimes they can shoot you. Ooh, look at that. That was real close to my head. Okay. Did you know, um, Souls 2, you can actually pull off headshots with Crystal Soul Spear? You might be able to in this one as well. I'm not sure. Like, if you use binoculars, you can line up a headshot. But it's, like, scary damage. I wonder if that works in Souls 3. I really enjoy the Sorcery in Souls 3, though, because of the shenanigans you can pull off with it. It's fun. Yeah, I, Sorcery is more about fun than being optimal in Souls 3. Because of weapon arts, really, they kind of made... They just... <laughs> Magic was good in Souls 1, it's good in Souls 2, and then I guess people just had enough. And so they finally made it crappy uh, in Souls 3. Like, it's really, it's really kind of subpar. Because you have to invest so many, you need 60 stat instead of uh, 40 or 50, right? So you got to invest so much to get that. And then, it's, it's not even that good. It's just sad. Like, if you start as a sorcerer, like you might think, oh, my magic's pretty good to start, but then very quickly, it becomes really trash damage. Okay, I'm gonna need to stock up on Estes first. I like about it is I built this cool build. It's a level 80 sorcery build. Um, it uses the Sage's Crystal Staff along with um, you know, the Logan's Catalyst remake. What do they call it? The uh, Court Sorcerer Staff. You use one in each hand. You activate the spell buff on the Crystal Sage which 
um, it affects the court sorcerer's staff. You know, it makes it more powerful. So when you're holding both, you buff the Crystal Sage, then you cast with the um, Court Sorcerer, and it's just stupid amounts of damage, like big-ass nuke hits, you know? It's great. It's really, really fun. Like, if you catch somebody off guard in PvP with that, they just die. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I use her at uh, the Archives. So when you're fighting the Twin Princes, like... And those Soul Spears will, will pierce one brother and hit the other, like, they hit both at the same time. So, um, I'm just, like, dishing out these huge, like, quarter-life chunks of damage with that. It's, it's really great. I enjoy it quite a lot. Yeah, I just really wanted to make a build where Sorcery was actually effective in Souls 3, because, like... Most of the time, it's bad. Um, at, at a low level, especially. So, but she's so fun. Um, she doesn't have a shield. I, I actually don't use shields most of the time in Souls 3. I just don't. Cause it's like, everything's so quick. Uh, and, and also they have the, um, the guard break uh, critical hit. So, you gotta be careful. So I usually don't run with a shield. I just dodge. And I use like a simple Cestus in my other hand, just to always be recharging FP, or uh, something Blessed to get HP, you know, something like that. A little bit of regen goes such a long way in Souls 3. It really does, even two points. You'll save tons of Estus doing that. Highly recommend you always have regen, preferably of both. Have an item that regens HP and then an item that regens FP and swap between them. Something lightweight, you know. And then in a pinch, if like if it's on a Cestus in a pinch, you can use that and just you know beat the shit out of somebody if they're if they're getting all up in your face. Okay, let's check. Yep, we're good. We're just gonna spell this guy down. Doubt it'll be as easy as last time. Let's find out. Okay, off to a great start there. Try to roll. Stop it! Fight me! Barely caught him. Ooh, stunned him. Whoop! Yeah, get alongside of him. Don't need to lock on if you can. Boom! Easy! Gave the tail is hard. But it's not usually worth it anyway. Whips are just not good in Souls 1. Souls 2, people were raving about that old whip. I never actually tried it out. But they were like, oh man, it's like such good damage and it reminds me of Castlevania, blah blah blah. But I was never really into it. I don't know what Castlevania is, but I just haven't played. Will I help? Yes, I will. You are welcome. Do you have anything I want? Um, I guess I could get some more repair powder. Sure. You have the cheapest. She does have the cheapest repair powder if you want to stock up. If you ever use a weapon that uh, has like a blast attack that drains your ability, you know, like a dragon weapon or a moonlight greatsword, Definitely have repair powder quick slotted, you know, behind your rest of somewhere. So that you can just shoot that off all day and repair in a pinch. Because some people will think they're clever and try and bait you into using it a few times and they're like, ha you can't use it anymore. And they're just like, uh, bitch, I have repair powder. And they're like, aw, I wasted my time. It's funny. You, you see them pause when you use it. They're like, what? <laughs> it's almost as if they forgot it existed. One of my favorite characters on the PS3 era of Souls uh, was named Lord Nightington, and he was like, he was a really cool fashion, heavy armor sorcerer uh, who used um, the Moonlight Greatsword. Oh my god, really? 
Very combustion didn't kill that thing. I shouldn't have wasted my combustions on that. I should remember when I'm fighting Artorias. Son of a bitch. Uh, right. And he had like 19 vitality or something really small for level 60. But he also had a lot of defense, so it kind of evened out. I just had to be careful about not taking too many hits. Um, and he had all the sorceries that mattered at that level. I think 44 intelligence, because he could, yeah, he could crack off Crystal Soul Spears, and he used Logan's Catalyst. So he was a high damage, high defense build with the Moonlight. So much fun. I really loved playing him, because, uh, like, he, he chopped up quite a few invaders or blasted them, you know, and the summons were always really impressed with his damage, so that was fun. Enjoyed that build quite a lot. Please tell me... There we go. Okay. Yeah, hello. I want to buy your humanity, please. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. All his stuff is overpriced, by the way. I would not buy from him unless I'm in dire situation. But, because humanity is a limited quantity item, I always buy that. Because it runs out, even if it's overcosted, it's like why not? Okay, here we go, Mr. Big Bad Boy. I'm sure he's gonna rip through my fucking shield. This is gonna be big. Ouch. Okay, well that's less damage than I expected, actually. Ooh, it's like fighting with plus five weapons. Come on. <gasps> really? Already? No, you fucking don't. Tell me three's enough. Jesus Christ. Whoa. He's angry. You mad, bro? Oh! He's mad, bro. Definitely recommend you roll that attack got very high penetration. Oh. oh, you buffing? You buffing? Let's see if two will do it. Oh yeah, two black plane. No buff for you, Holmes. He does that. He starts spamming that when you get too close to him. He remains back the fuck up. That's it. Get the hell off me, move. You're no moss, buddy. You're running out of opportunities here. Hey. Even new game plus tell by the mighty pyromancy. Forget about using a split damage weapon on him though. If I was poking with this rapier, forget about it. It's like it doesn't even register. Like if you try buffing with gold pine resin, you'll notice your damage barely goes up at all because he just has a tremendous amount of uh, elemental resistance. Since I don't need most of this shit, I am tempted to just sprint through it, because I still have all my... <gasps> oh, good. I still have my carvings. I thought they took them away from me for a second. I'm like, that's filthy. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna breeze past all this shit, because I don't care. I don't need, uh... I'm not worried about dude invading me. He doesn't even drop anything. So... Just saying he won't invade since I'm hollow, but I'm not worried about it. Whoa, I'm being okay. Come on. Hello, new uh viewer person. Feel free to say hello. Doing some new game plus action here, trying to get black flame. So I get two copies. Come on. 
I also want to do a build wearing that, um, you know, that chestnut looking head. Just because it's funny. It's cool looking. So much to do with so few character slots. You laughing at the other side of your face in a minute. Oh! Yeah, he could just push you right off the cliffs if you're not careful. Kind of like I just did to him. Plus, you want to have a quick gander at the build. Doing this at uh, level 50. Oh, I'm only a plus 2 Dark Wraith. Must need to turn in more. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's just like a bit of a vid gouge build, I guess you could say. Using elemental weapons. Um, but it's pyromancy focused, so... A lot of attunement. I'm trying to double up on casts of um, Great Combustion and Black Flame for PvP purposes. Because I think it'll be fun to just spam that in the face of an invader. Just gotta skip past all this, I don't need it. Um, going this way, I'll show you real quick. You'll hear that sound again, that thumping. That means it's time to produce some light. And it'll open up a secret. Uh, anytime you hear that thumping sound though in the DLC, it means produce light to get the uh, special something. What's even in here? I think it's Red Titanite. Yeah, Red Titanite. Just kind of a weird little thing to just add in there. The other spot gives you the uh, silver amulet thing that repels dark magic. As a matter of fact, I think I want to pick that up. I didn't skip it in the new game playthrough. Even though I'll probably never use the thing. It's just easier to roll dark magic these days than use that. to bleed out this mimic. That kick always makes me laugh. <laughs> Just he's gonna punt you like a soccer ball. Thank you. Okay, so yeah the weapons for the build are Bandit Knife and Rapier. I have Chaos and Lightning version of both, you know, for different areas. But the reason I wanted to make sure I had Bandit Knife is because New Game Plus, I figured, you know, Bleed was going to be pretty important because of the big health pools. But so far, I haven't actually really needed it. Oh, we have a comment from Sifsand. Hello. Let me, um, I'm going to change my frame here real quick so I can read your comments on the TV. There we are. Yeah, see, now I can see. And everyone can see you saying hello. Thanks for stopping by and, you know, saying hi. Yesterday actually was the first time I had somebody talk in my chat, so that was cool. I actually got to, you know, chat with a bit. So we are closing in on the last section of the DLC here, which is where I'll pick up the second copy of Black Flame. So again, you're going to pause halfway down the stairway for the ambush. That leaping attack does a lot of damage. Gotta watch out for that one. Take some cover back here. Hey, sweet. Yeah, the stream is is not geared toward. Uh, oh God, that was close. Toward uh, new players. This is more for people that have played before and are maybe looking for a couple of tips. Damn it, only I had dexterity. Okay, this guy I think I'm gonna close in on. Yeah, yeah, cast your poison. It's not gonna help you. It 
So in addition to providing pro tips that might be beneficial to someone on their second or later playthrough, um, I also like to add in conversation now and then about just all manner of things. So if you have a topic that you'd like to discuss, like earlier I was talking about uh, domestic and wild animals and how they have like shared behaviors. Kind of interesting to see that, how like a cat is still a cat no matter how big it is, you know? That kind of thing. They all still like to sit in boxes. <laughs> um, so if you have any any idea for a topic, we can chat for a bit. Oh, sweet. Um, third playthrough or like uh, new game plus three, you mean? Like three different characters? Actual third playthrough, so like New Game Plus 2. That's cool. Um, are you stopping at like 120 or you just keep leveling up? Just wondering if you're going for like a set build or just enjoying the game. Oh, okay, three different characters. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, uh, um, you got like uh, three different builds going on? Curious to know what you've made. Because I like to try and have a build like for all the different types. Oh, you know what? I should get my farming gear here. Get a little humanity while I'm at it. Oh, that hurt. Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, those are fun. You can actually probably pull off a quality build, like 27 strength, 40 dex, and still squeeze in a bit of attunement for pyromancy. I bet that would be really strong. Fit that in all into level 120. Me, for the most part, though, I do uh, lower level builds. Oh, wow. That's a lot of juice. I've heard that um, the Artorius sword is one of the, like best weapons you can use when you have high stats and everything. Have you tried that weapon out? The one made for- I think it's made from Soul of Sif? I've also heard that Ornstein's spear does really well with like a high stats character. Cool. Yeah, definitely try that one out. Did you get the shield instead? That is a really good shield as well. The great shield of Artorius. Ridiculous stability on that thing. Cool. Are you wearing his armor? Is it like a cosplay build? Yeah. <laughs> Rivaled only by Havels, I would say. Havels doesn't have as much stability, but it's got better elemental defense, so... Wow, that... Jesus, those things hurt so much. Stupid... Wish I had a longer weapon. I should get a Demon Spear, actually. And fully upgrade it. I bet the damage would be decent. Come on, Sif, wake up. Thank you. Okay, we are almost to Black Flame. Then I think I will. Yeah, did you know that there's a different cutscene? If you save Sif first and then go and um, meet the bigger one in the forest? Plays out a different scene because Sif recognizes you. It's pretty cool.
Well, let's see. You could do Sorcery, Faith, Pyro, Strength Dex, Quality. So that's like six, whoops, six different builds you could do. Oh god, it hurts so much. Mostly I do um, low level, like level 60 and below stuff, just because I really enjoy co oping with randoms. Yeah, he's a cool guy to cosplay too. He's got good gear and really swag armor. Oh! The pain. I've enjoyed um, cosplaying as Silver Knight and Hawkeye Goth. Those are two really fun builds to do. Cool. So what are, um, let's talk weapons though. What are some of your favorite weapons that you've enjoyed so far on these builds? Yesterday I was trying to tell people about weapons that are, um, that like you should definitely try before you leave Dark Souls Remastered, you know? So maybe you were using one that I forgot about. Black Flame. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, we're done here. Gotta buy more bones. Oh! Fier, welcome back. Good to see you. I just noticed I was talking to two people. Derp. I was so distracted. Good to see you back. Zweihander, Black Knight Halberd. Those are both really fun. Um, I was saying earlier I've been missing the Zweihander. Because it's isn't it great to just turn things into pancakes with that weapon? It's such great uh, crowd control on that thing. The Halberd too. Um, you see like a, a lot of people who do speed runs on YouTube, they uh, use that halberd just because like the damage is pretty ridiculous on that from the get-go. Not to mention uh, because it upgrades with Twinkling and there's like two or three easy to access lizards, you know, right at the beginning of the game, you can easily upgrade it to like plus three. So yeah, very common, very powerful speedrun weapon. The trouble is, uh, usually because it weighs so much, those people like run around with it naked <laughs> and so they've got like maybe with a wolf ring. Demon's Great Machete, that's a very good strength weapon. So, here's what's nice about the machete. Wait a minute, doesn't this guy, one moment. Doesn't this guy sell Homeward Bones? I came up here to get some. Yeah, 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 he's got the cheapest Homeward Bones in the game. I'm gonna stock up on a good amount here, because I keep burning through them. Right, so anyway, Demon's Great Machete. Uh, 27 strength, 10 dex is all you need to maximize to hit the soft cap for that bad boy for two-handing it, right? And so it's it's ultra great sword, so it's got the wide R1 swings, you know, back and forth. The R2, though, is trash. You don't want to use that because it's very slow and you'll probably just end up getting punished for it. But the R1 is solid, and, like, compare it to, um, like a, like a Elemental's Y-Hander, right? Like, a, most people run a Chaos Y-Hander. 138, 7, 8, 130. That's a good spread. That should give you a lot of opportunity for connectivity. Not to mention level 1 build. It's super fun. I've done it before. It's it's a really great challenge. I, I enjoy it. Plus, you got to think, like, how many weapons can I actually use on this build with my 12 strength, you know? Grant? Um, I tried Grant. I found it disappointing, but maybe you'll enjoy it. Um, it's, it's like a lot of stat investment. Um, I just don't think it's, it's worth the weight and the stat investment and the split damage. But hey, if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. But going back to the, um, Demon's Great Machete, comparing it to the Chaos Swyhander, the difference is, uh, you can buff the Demon's Great Machete with, like, Gold Pine, and that is going to put you above damage, and it's all physical, right? So it's like, 
600 some odd physical damage with 27 strength to handing that great machete. Although I did read it's like a hair slower than the Zwei to swing, and they did that to try and prevent stun lock with the great machete. 731 one handed, is that true? Holy crap, that's a lot of damage. But again, you're comparing that, like, it's a split damage weapon, so let's compare it to the Zwei. Zwei has far less weight and stat investment. And a Chaos Y is giving you 675 damage um, one-handed. So you got to think about that. With Grant, it does, but it also requires 30 faith. And you can cast Wog on your own with 28 or 30 faith. So is it really worth it? Considering you need 50 strength and, uh, and 24 weight, I, I just don't think it is personally. But again, you know, if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. As long as you're having fun with the game. Okay, so now I have my second black flame. That is so much. That is so much damage and spam. Look at that. 16 casts each. So I just... Any invader comes up to me. They're probably going to bait me into casting eight of these, right? And then they'll assume, okay, you're out of black flames now. But imagine the surprise on their face when the spam continues. <laughs> There's no way they can evade that many. And then if I run out, I just swap. Uh, you um, cast one per slot? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but like, you can look here. I've got two casts slotted and they stack. They add up to the total. Great fireball, yeah. So that's why I've got 16 of each now. And then a little bit of range with this guy. That's on 19 attunement. With 16 attunement, even, you could just get a ton of casts of this. I just wanted to have a, a small amount of range I can count on. Okay, I think she's about done. Sure. What's the secret? Oh, Wrath of the Gods is three casts per slot. And then you run out. So, um, that's something else you gotta watch out for. If you're using Wrath and people see you, see that you have it, they will usually try and bait you into casting the other two. So, like, you'll, you'll see them get close and then roll, because they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you to burn it out. You cheat! What do you mean you cheat? Like, you use a mule or something? Define cheating. Okay, I have what I need now. I want to go to... Where am I going to co-op at? Tomb of the Giants. I need to unlock Tomb of the Giants. I haven't even killed Pinmill yet. Okay, let's do that. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty common, actually. A lot of people use muling these days with um, save backup. But I think I read that they started getting wise to save backups. Like, if you do it too frequently, then your account gets flagged. And I think some people have been banned for it. Um, but yeah, I actually had some characters left over from back in the mule days. And I had, like, just, like, stacks of 99 Titanite. It's good for when, like, you've already played and you just want to set up builds, you know? Like, that's understandable, because, like, you've done it before, you've put the work in, so who cares if you're just trying to build a build efficiently, you know? I think it's... I think it's fine for people to do that. But I just recommend you don't do it, like, if, you, if it's your first playthrough, because you're going to ruin the experience. Oh, you don't use, uh, muling? How do you do, how do, you do the dupe, then? Oh crap, I guess you can only carry one binocular. By the way, I found that green shield I couldn't find before. It's over here, but it's a crappy shield anyway, so do not recommend using it. 
Just go down to Valley of Drags and grab the Crush Shield if you want something that's actually... Oh, holy crap! Worth using. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. Okay. Good thing I didn't revert my humanity already. Oh, that's a cool technique. Using another, I think I'd seen a video about that once, but I, I didn't bother with it. That's cool, though. As long as you... Oh, shit. I thought I was gonna fucking fall and die right there. Whoop. As long as you aren't, um... Hacking, you know. It's fine, because you're only getting items that you would have gotten anyway. So it's like, whatever. But if you're hacking, or you're using something that gives you... I don't know if there's a way to do that, like, to get more spell cast than you should have. You know, like... I don't think you can mule spells, as far as I know. Because, like, if you want to get, like, a billion copies of Wrath of the Gods, for example, you should definitely be forced to do that many playthroughs if you're gonna make a build that cheesy, you know? Because, like, if you get invaded by a guy like that, at least he put the work in, you know? You gotta respect that. A little, even if it is super cheesy, but as long as you're not hacking or, you know, getting items that you couldn't otherwise get normally, you know, without doing the appropriate amount of playthroughs, I think it's fine. Most people played this game already once, it's like, whatever. You're just saving yourself some time. I don't think you even can hack on PS4, although I did meet a guy on PS3 who was, like, immune to damage, and I was like, what? I thought you couldn't hack on PlayStation. That was annoying, but whatever. There's a lot of it on PC, though. So much. <laughs> when I first started playing Souls 2 with a friend on PC, we got invaded by some guy whose name was, like, in red. So, that was already suspicious. But then as soon as he hit you, it instantly broke all of your gear. And we were like low level too, so we could not afford to replace it. And it was just like, man, I kind of don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> he was so sad. My poor noob friend. The hacker ruined his day. Yeah, gravity, yeah. I've seen a few videos of that. That's kind of cool where people outsmart the invader and get him to fall or whatever. Can't survive that. Oof. You gotta watch out for these fireballs. They really, really hurt. So try not to let him cast at all. He's got zero poise. You can easily stun mock him. Get out of my way. You stupid, get out of my way! Oh my god. Alright. Don't have time for you. Okay. Just fall straight down. There we go. I bounced off of a wall or something doing this yesterday. I just fell straight to my death. Very annoying. So that jump's a little finicky. Oh. Because back in the day, uh, people, okay, so when people were newer at the game, usually they wouldn't level Vit, everybody would make themselves a glass cannon because somehow they thought that was a good idea, and then they would be shocked when they would get one shot by a crystal soul spear. Uh, well, guess what? That's going to happen if you don't level your Vit, you know? So, and also people thought that magic made the game too easy because uh magic was pretty solid in souls one you know and in souls 2 magic is really phenomenal like souls 2 is all about the magic like if you keep leveling up because of soul memory eventually you're gonna have to turn your build elemental otherwise you're just not dealing enough damage you know souls 2 you can infuse and buff on top of that and you just reach like astronomical numbers of damage um souls one though magic is good especially uh, when Dark Magic came out, oh my god, so many people complained about it being OP. You know, Pursuers, uh, Dark Bead. Dark Bead still one-shots people. 
So that's why people don't like it. And that's, I think, that's what led to in Souls 3, Magic getting nerfed so hard, where now it's, it's, it's really kind of crap. Like, Souls 3, Magic is just not that great. In most cases, you're better off uh, just using... Whoop! Fireball. Um, oh my god. Right, just using uh, melee. Because, especially with weapon arts, you know. Just made uh, weapons that much more powerful. I don't know. I'm, I'm still. I still feel like magic is only okay in Souls 3. It's competitive, but it's not OP like it used to be. In Souls 1, though, I do still enjoy a dedicated melee build. Um, especially if you, like, stuck Gold Pine Resin or. Or even use 16 intelligence for great magic weapon. Nameless King. Yeah, he, what is it? He's super vulnerable to lightning and dark, isn't it? It's pretty ironic that he's weak to lightning. Actually, I didn't know that for a long time. I assumed he was strong to lightning because that's the element that he's hitting you with. Um, and so some guy was doing a, a Solaire cosplay and started blasting him with lightning bolts. He was my co-op summon, and I was like, what the hell's wrong with you, you stupid? <laughs> like, why did I even summon you? But turns out he was actually doing good damage, and like, I was an idiot back then. Yeah, you can still kill many a boss with magic, you know. But it's like most people only think about it in terms of, um... PvP? Where magic is more balanced, right? Um, but PvE, yeah, magic is still quite dependable. I think they did a good job of making it even with melee. Uh, but that's kind of the problem, right? So in Souls 3, magic and melee are kind of on par. But magic has the disadvantage of you have to burn your... You have to split your Estus, you know, because you need the blue one. And then you're burning through FP, and you have to invest, like, more stats in, uh... You need 60 intelligence or whatever you're doing, right? 30 and 30 for pyromancy, 60 faith. Whereas, to softcap the web with weapons, you still only need 40. Um, so, like, they're, they're on par until the magic guy runs out of um, FP, and then he's, like, completely outmatched by the, the dedicated melee build, so... In a way, magic is slightly behind melee in Souls 3. Yeah, you're gonna save Solaire? You know, you know how to do that, right? With the, um... Chaos Covenant shortcut? Okay, so I came down here to open up Tomb of the Giants. I've opened up Duke's Archives. Do I want to mess with Isolith? I feel like most people don't summon an Isolith. I don't recall being summoned there very often. A lot of people summon a Duke's, though. I think most people just do Dukes first, right after they get Lord Vessel. Okay. But let's give things a try at On Orlando with the SL50 build. We'll see if we can find some co-op action. How much time left today? Got an hour. Yeah, the Bed of Chaos is really a pain in the ass. I died a few times taking it down in my new game. Because it's just so, it feels so like luck based, you know what I mean? But Fair did give me a cool tip. You can actually shoot the left uh, vine, tendril, whatever it is, with a bow. And I didn't know that. I was like, yo, that's pretty cool. And then I was saying that using a great shield is, um, or just any, like the most stable shield you can get your hands on. Preferably a great shield. Five tries? Yeah, that's about average, I'd say. You know, I was saying I'm really curious how the people who do the no run, or no hit, no death runs, how do they do Bed of Chaos? I was just thinking, like, that's got to be incredibly stressful.
Not sure how they pull it off, but somehow they do. Yeah, right? <laughs> At least it gives you that much. Come on, you stupid elevator. Taking all day. Taking all day about it. So, I'm curious, uh, Sif, if you don't mind me asking, where are you from? I'm trying to figure out. Because I play pretty early in the day. I'm American, but, uh, I, I think I play during unusual hours. So, I feel like I, probably the viewers I get are European, so I just wonder. Slap down the sign and see what we get. Let me try. Password is off. No password. Cool. Alright. We're chilling. Midwest. Cool. You know, I've considered moving out there, actually. I'm on the West Coast. Ohio. Right on. But, um, how's the population out there? Because I, I think I've heard that, it, like, it's kind of, it's less dense than East or West Coast. Is that true? I'm also curious about the crime rate out there, so if you wouldn't mind sharing what it's like. Spread out population. Do you mean like your neighbor's house is like a mile away? Or it's just kind of like like little pockets of people throughout the state. Like where the where the cities are at. Like do you have to drive a long way to get anywhere? Yeah, I had a, um, a friend or two who live in the Midwest, like internet friends, you know, and they've always said that, like, they feel isolated and things are, like, really far away from them, like, they have to drive an hour to, like, get anywhere, and I was like, dang, it's certainly not like that where I live, it's pretty packed over here. It's really interesting, though, to see the differences... Of, of where you live, like, the impact that has on a person, the way, like, it shapes them. Yeah, actually, um, I'm in California, and the weather here is, is odd as well. <laughs> like, sometimes you just get a cloudy or rainy day out of nowhere, and then it quickly fades away back to, like, 80, 90 degree weather. It's like, okay. Totally bonkers. You guys get tornadoes out there, though? Because we don't get anything like that. We don't get big storms. We just get earthquakes. Come on, somebody summon me. What is going on? No tornadoes? That's good. I thought that was like a Midwest, like, uh, specialty. <laughs> you know? So, let me ask you real quick, like, okay, there's East Coast, West Coast, there's the South, and there's the Midwest. Is there, like, a Mid-East in USA? Because I never hear it mentioned. Like, is that just not a, not a thing?
Like, if it's not, then why don't they just call it the middle instead of the Midwest? You know? Mid-USA. Why is there a Midwest but not a Mid-East? Oh my god, come on. I feel like the game just dies after Parish. Like, it just thins out so much. I'm at Anne Orlando, level 50. Does anyone think that that's, like, a bad level to do it at? Too high, too low? I'm fully geared, like, fully upgraded. However, the way matchmaking works, I should be able to connect with anyone who has a plus 10 weapon or higher. And you get the lightning spear and sense fortress, with, which automatically sets your tier to plus 10. So I should be able to connect with anyone who has a lightning spear. But I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Back in the day, Anne Rolando used to be, you know, 50 was a good, good level to be at, but I'm not getting summoned. I just feel like there's too many pros playing now, so that's pushed the, the levels further and further down. Like, you got people at level 20 running Anne Rolando. <laughs> it's wild. Actually, back on PS3 era, I had a level 20 twink. And I just decided to take it here one day. And I, I think I got summoned by, like, an SL1 or, you know, somebody doing a low challenge run like that. And I was like, oh shit, cool. So that was fun. There is a Mideast in USA. I almost never hear anyone refer to it like that, though. So weird. Well, maybe it's just coincidence. What do you think? Is 50 too high for Analando? I could match with someone 40, because it goes down 10 levels. Plus 10%, so that would mean... The lowest I could get summoned by is a 37. And, really, are you going to be less than 37 in Anorlando? I don't think so. Oh, I thought those were still considered, like, East Coast type stuff. Hmm. Interesting. Man, what a drag. No summon. Uh, well, it's probably too early in the day, you know. Um, most people are still doing that 9 to 5, so you won't see them for another probably like 5 hours or so. Great Lakes region. Ah. Have you been to the lakes? Curious what that's like. Are they actually great, or are they kind of mediocre? <laughs> well, oh god. Yeah, there's a lot of the states I haven't seen myself. I've been all the way up through Washington, the next state over, and all the way back down again. Like, like a big oval shape, you know, circling around back to Cali. Did that, um... In my teen years, that was fun. Been to Mexico. That's about it, though. I haven't seen much of the world. Wouldn't mind visiting Europe, though. See what all that's about. I like cultural differences. You know, I like seeing what makes a place unique. The little quirks that it has. I really enjoy that. So whenever I make, like, internet friends who are from far away, I always ask them weird questions like, like, hey, do you guys have this brand of fast food out there? You know, do you guys have Pop-Tarts? Stuff like that. <laughs> just, I just wonder, like, is there a difference in the brands and, and, you know, just weird little things like that. All right, I'm going to swap characters, actually, because it feels like everyone's asleep. Let's do something lower level, see if we can find some action. Um, what I'm going to do real quick 
to West Virginia. Cool. I don't know. I think traveling might be a little overrated. <laughs> I mean, everybody's like, oh my god! It's like, a, it's like a thing. Society makes you think that traveling is awesome, but then sometimes it's not. Uh, so I'm going to restart the stream real quick because I want this to be a separate video since we're just doing strictly co-op now. Um, so I'll be right back. Please stay in your seats and thanks for watching. And remember, don't go hollow. <laughs>